Hey, this is Mike. We're at our favorite shooting spot here in um, Red Lodge, Montana. But I just wanted to get a little bit of uh, our scenery here. It's, it's really gorgeous. There's the waterfall coming down from the mountain. And there's nothing like the sound of that waterfall. Uh, it really is wonderful. Here's a little view of the overhead shot there. I was going to do several rifles today and the knucklehead forgot to put the 177 caliber pellets. So we're not going to be doing reviews. I had some wine rocks I was going to do some reviews on. Um, but anyway, this is what we're going to be shooting at. I believe we're around 65 yards. It's a uh, Folgers can. And um, let's see, where is our shot at? I'm going to pan as slow as I can, but just bear with me. So there, we'll be shooting from there. Now, I'll probably stick a scope on it just to make it easier for my eyes, but I'm pretty sure what we're doing today, we'll be able to use the open sights. We're going to find out. But anyway, I'm just going to pan real slow and get another look at that mountain up there at the top. It sure is gorgeous. It is the wilderness and you do have to be careful. Um, last year, my wife had two full-size wolves come through, right through the camp. And that was the first for, for, for that ever happening that anybody knew about. But anyway, there's another shot of the falls, like, or the water coming down the slope from the mountains. At least I think I got it. It's hard to tell inside the, um, inside the, with the sunny lens here. So let's wrap it up. I'll get up there by the shooting table and we'll see what we're featuring today. Well, here's our featured gun. It is the Gamo Magnum. Now the gun looks nice. Obviously it's a thumb hole. It's in a synthetic stock. It has a patent pendant scope rail, sliding scope rail, like the sled type deal, I imagine. It has a newer design SAT trigger, adjustable. And um, the blue one's really nice. The gun looks nice. There's a shot of um, the steel. Comes with a 3x9x40 scope. I don't know how good the scope is. Um, obviously because this is brand new but others who may have been using this could pipe in they certainly are welcome the interesting thing about the gun is it's very powerful it's gas rammed some say it's very hard to cock we're gonna find out and get into it um, I'm gonna wind up cleaning the barrel first I'm kind of a guy that likes to do that on a new gun just to get the factory cut out of it there's that patent dependent scope rail so how light is it? I would say it's probably about seven pounds. It's very light. Now we know that weights are friend in this air gun um, sport, but um, we're gonna find out where this rifle comes in at. A friend of mine told me he really, really liked it. And in fact, he told me he liked it so much, Rich, Char, <laughs> not gonna drop a name, that I had to get it. I had to get it because of the lightweight and the accuracy on this rifle with the really nice barrels that these um, that these gamos makes um, I just had to get one so let me clean a barrel and then we'll get into it and see what's happening well first off do you get this gamo you're gonna need the torque drivers every screw on here is Torx and guess what I don't have with me I don't have any Torx the SAT has an adjustable screw for adjusting that, um, but that's a torque as well, and you need a skinny one. The SAT stands for Smooth Action Trigger. They had a CAT, and I think that's standing for um, Custom. <laughs> anyway, it's just a play on words that they have. As far as the scope rail goes, I don't see anything special about it. It looks to me like a riser rail. It has the three bolts here to give you the, um, the clamping pressure. And in the back of that, it has another actual two, two bolt stop 
for this particular scope riser rail that's what i'm going to call it i don't see anything that goes and does any of this action so i don't know where that part of it came in i didn't see anything in a book about that either um, so basically now we have a scope riser that has a, the uh, scope rail stop behind it but now you're going to put your mount on top of that and your mount doesn't have anything to stop it now does it so in this particular case it's kind of defeating the purpose other than being a riser um, it's hard to cock I finally got this in and set up with um, another type of scope I had this scope set up here and it just wasn't track and it basically was something was shifting and I like I said I don't have the torque screws with me I'm, I'm gonna hope that they're tight but um, I am able to get um, zeroed in for some bullseyes enough to get sighted in so I can actually hit my red bucket down there so Becky's gonna show you what it looks like to cock this thing it is a, it's definitely a bear if you're gonna cock it get yourself ready positioned properly and go into it with a full sweep don't even hesitate um, so that's gonna look like this even with the scope on it it's slight it's that's the good aspect so far about this gun and the barrel of course they they make really good barrels and that's what it looks like and it wasn't really easy you can feel it but it's doable so it's really not an all-day plinking gun obviously but guys who like magnums are going to want to play with this and i'm one of them and so i'll have her zoom all the way into our target down there slowly and it's about 62 yards i believe according to my range finder <clears throat> as far as the safety on this it's manual and I missed but so it's a manual safety let's get another shot there the first shots out of the box sound like a 22 rim fire echoing off the mountainside up there there we go so that's it for that I mean that's not bad I can do another one if you want so a lightweight powerful hunting gun is what you have here and if you just like to shoot stuff which I certainly do I enjoy that it's easier than holding your breath and trying to get dime size groups at 50 yards uh, you know I mean it's difficult if you're not doing it all the time there we go so that's it so it's lightweight the length of pull on the trigger I mean there it is it's it's not far by any stretch and it means that you're actually kind of chunked up on it I should have measured it but I don't have a taper out here in the wilderness and that's what the gun looks like even with the scope it's not heavy it feels right um, I tried to clean the barrel but then uh, my patches proved to be too thick for this and I couldn't cut them so that was a, that was a wash too you know you pack up your gear and you go out there and it turns out that you don't have what you need of course especially with that torque screwdriver so, um, so anyway these uh, barrels are the hammer forged barrels from Gamos they're good barrels um, it's it's a good gun I don't know what uh, everybody else paid for theirs, but I think I got this for maybe 240. I don't know, 215. Um, I think it's worth it. Now there's something going on with the breech, which is quite interesting. Um, what Gamo did here is let me get situated. Put my glasses on. Gamo has the breech seal right here on the receiver tube and it protrudes a good bit out past this tube area in here and uh, let's see if this helps right down in there so when actually when you close this barrel block let me put a pellet in it first and then shoot it 
now that now that it's cocked let's do the bucket one more time babe since we're going to load this up get down into our target area hit it so I don't even know if it's going to show up but um, if you look at the breech block area right in here you'll see there's a gap there well there's a gap because the breech seal in their design sticks out beyond normal now remember normally the breech seals on the barrel block but in this case they put it on the receiver tube so as far as this gun's concerned i think that i would like to maybe detune it by putting a excuse me for me a different gas ram in it it'll make it easier to cock the feet per second will probably drop you'll probably have a little bit less piston slam because it does have that ping which is typical and uh, when you have that powerful of a gun when it's designed to give you power that you're going to have a ping at the piston um that's probably what i would do and also go in there and properly lube it of course and then see what i can do with the trigger i'm hoping the uh, sat trigger could actually smooth out a little bit better and become easier that would be great but anyway that's it for a beautiful montana um up here in red lodge montana i don't know if you want to pan any while you're at it we had some deer come in here last night um, and it actually is during the middle of the week so there's the noise level and the activity up here is quiet during the middle of the week and then back to the gun if you want lightweight powerful hunting gun synthetic stock synthetic breech block uh, this baby's built for power power if I can't say it power and it's accurate I did have some groups up there but I really wasn't that far out so I was basically just enough to hone the scope in at 12 yards so I can hit that bucket back there so this is Mike saying see you on the next one take care I've been sitting here testing this breech seal out via the tissue test and I am getting some flutter of the tissue out of it now you know because this is a different design it's just basically now we have the breech seal on this rather than the breech block but the breech seal on this does protrude up and out a good bit so I don't know if I'm causing it or we actually just have a, a leak for that I would say you're just gonna have to keep an eye on the feet per second and see what that's see what's going on there and that's it on that but as far as this scope mount scope base deal see this guy here on the dovetail you have the two screws and then you have the stop pin right there the big fat stop pin so this is a stop <clears throat> now this stop is in front of this riser piece is what I'm going to call it for this piece here they did give you a hole so when you do mount your scope on it the pin that's in the back you can drop it into the hole but for me it kind of defeats the purpose for one the scopes up high and then um you know instead of having the entire scope not only pinned but also clamped with this block back here you're only relying on the pin that fell into the top of this riser here so i'm going to look into that myself when we get back off the bench take this riser piece off see what's below it um I doubt that there's going to be another hole on the dovetail for the stop pin if you just get rid of this altogether. But then it won't matter anyway because this will be on the receiver as well and have its own pin as a stop block. We're just going to have to look into it and see which way we like to configure it. Maybe some will like their scope up that high. Maybe some won't. Maybe it won't even work out properly. I don't know. These are some of the things we're just going to have to go through and find out. But it's just kind of strange, I'm saying, because you have the riser with the block, which will keep this rock solid. And then when you're all done, all you have for this is the pin that drops into this from your scope mount. 
But anyway, that's a wrap for today. I do like the gun. You know, it's pretty cool because it's powerful, it's lightweight. I may even make a springer out of it. I may either just uh, put a lighter ram in it and play with this or make a spring around or either way it's a magnum gun it's lightweight it's pretty cool has an accurate barrel there's something funky going on with the breech area i don't know like i said we could be causing that problem we'll keep an eye on the feet per second but anyway that's a wrap take care well we're back we're in the shop i got the gun on the bench let's go over a couple things that i've forgotten and some of the things that I brought up earlier. One of the things I forgot was that the breech block on this gun is synthetic, it's not steel. Although it does look very nice, um, it's probably one of the reasons the gun is lighter. So that's a synthetic breech block, barrel block, whatever you want to call it. And then we are definitely having a breech seal issue with this gun. It's by design, it's a manufacturer design. They probably know about it and they're not gonna do anything about it. But we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the patented scope rail actually gives you variations of different things you can do depending upon what works out best for you. But uh, this comes off, it has the three mountain screws underneath it it's just typical so basically it's a it's a um it's a riser right dovetail riser has these um nubs in the back right there and they go fit right into the back of this stop the um riser does have a nice hole in it so whatever mount you're using for your scope your pin can fit right down into that or you can try taking this off and not using it and just use the dovetail on the receiver and then this stop here. So you have the two pins for the stop and this big pin right here, right? So this gets clamped real tight and then you have a hefty size torque head screw there. So you do have some different options going on there. Other than that, that's that. Now I guess these two nubs there I don't know, may help with a dampening effect rather than just having metal to metal. Um, here's the breech seal. Let's get into that. That's the real crux of everything that's going on with this gun. Um, give me a second. I'll get this to where we can actually see it. Let's see if I can turn it. What's going on with this gun? Uh, can you see that? Isn't that horrible? That's your brand new gun. What's going on with this is the locking jam is swinging by this seal and it's nicking it because they decide to put this on the receiver tube. It sticks out a good bit and it just swings by and nicks it and, and that's the result. That's the result of it. That's really bad. You know, you buy a new gun and that's part of the design. Isn't that a shame? What's really a shame is the fact that they came up with this idea of making a lightweight, powerful hunting gun. And then they did not fix the issue that the design came with. That's bad, but that's also typical. That's what you get when you buy air guns. So along with this gun, Normally they go for like 350. I seen them on eBay shipped for 250. What you're going to get for with this gun, um, besides this problem, is you're going to get a good barrel because gammas make some good barrels. Right, you got front and rear sights, um, a decent scope mount. You have very variables you can change and do different things with it and depend upon what works out best for you you have that sat trigger it's two stage it's adjustable you should be able to sweeten that up the gun actually does feel nice every which way even when you're holding it you put the scope on it it still feels good and you won't be weighed down so i would say for you guys who like to hunt and are mechanically inclined and work on your own guns if you get one of these this may be appealing to you now what i'm going to do is i'm going to work out and see what an o-ring seats if i get the o-ring to seat in more um 
because after all this seal is is fairly um, stout so the o-ring may be the ticket and it may be the way to go let's keep our fingers crossed i knew about this problem because i talked all the time about air guns with my good friend rich Shar, great guy and his gun had the same problem so this is not a one-off this is a manufacturer issue that goes on with every one that they build of this model but the idea was to see if we can get it and see if we can do something with it he liked the gun so much the son liked the gun so much he just enjoyed shooting it was it's accurate and um, he liked the trigger out of the box well anyway with that said I'm gonna swing around real slow so don't rip your head off I crony the gun when I got home and I was getting swings of feet per second anywhere below 900 to 940 um, this gun should be doing much more than that believe it or not and that's with the bad if you hear me that's with the bad um, breach seal at any rate that's what we have now what i'm going to do with the gun because this is my thing i'm going to see if we can do something with this gun i think this gun has a lot of potential and um we may even make it a springer we may put a different ram in but the first thing we're going to do is to see what the breech seal can be had um with uh, via an o-ring and that solves the problem and yet we get a seal that will be fantastic if not we're going to wind up living with a gun that nicks the seal um, but yet still performs basically 930 to 940 feet per second that's a 0.22 14.3 grain so this is going to go back on my list of air gun projects i've got these guys going on right now i've got my shop under under complete rearrangement and things are going on in there not this shop here but the lathe the upper shop but anyway that's it um that's what i found i will say that um, since i've had this and i've been shooting it these torque screws have not come loose interesting don't you think not this stock has been solid and you can tell when you go to cock the gun nothing's wavering or you know trying to slip or slosh around so that's quite interesting but anyway that's what we have this is mike saying take care and thanks for hanging out